when we were doing our hive inspections the other day, we went ahead and tagged these two uh, because we kind of peeked in here, but we didn't pull any honey from them, obviously, because that they're only one uh, deep box right now. They are gonna end up needing to be added. These were two late swarms that I caught. They're doing really good activity-wise. This one more so than this one. Sweet girls. I'm just gonna peek in and check you guys out, okay? Always check your inner cover. Make sure that queen's not on here. And she's not. And then what I typically do is I set everything out front. I work my colony is always from the back. It's just a lot easier. Okay, they're starting to work. Starting to work. I'll set this one aside. I always remove one frame to make it a lot easier to have working space. And I always start from typically the left side and work my way over. The other thing that I do is I always keep my hive tool in my right hand. And so I know that this is the front. Oh, wow. You girls have found some purple pollen. Let's see if you guys can see that. Can you see that purple pollen? Very pretty. I'm still learning. Still learning about pollen. and all the different, all the different tree pollens and flowers that are around us to kind of understand and, and better be able to determine where their sources are. Oh yeah. Oh, look at that. That's very nice. Let's get you a close look. So the one colony that I was a little worried about about activity, and if we were queen right, I am wrong. Can you see in there? There is day old egg, some larva. That pretty, pretty purple pollen again. Yeah, I was wrong. And look, look at that young, look at that young little bee. She's so white and fuzzy. You girls are being super sweet. I wonder if we're gonna find this queen. I always kind of point this out because I never know when certain viewers are actually watching, whether you're seasoned or you're just now doing some research. Um, but when I have an opportunity to point it out, I do. All of this up top, this is the capped honey. You can see how light everything is. And then when you look right here, that's capped brood. That's female worker brood. And then on the back, oh yeah. That's all capped brood. And then you have up top here, this is nectar. So the brood tends to always kind of be like a nice, pretty rainbow shaped. But uh, this is gonna be a good, I feel a lot better about this colony than, than what I did. Because I really wasn't sure by the decreased amount of activity from the entrance compared to my other colonies. And this is actually a very small colony. Again, this was a later catch, uh, but all of my other colonies are so big that it's easy to question the survivability of this colony. 
I haven't really been filming that many hive inspection videos and it's mainly because I just learned something about my camera and uh, it kept overheating and I figured out how to make it to where it doesn't overheat that much. So I know you guys are probably seeing something on that back side that I'm going to pay attention to, but I'm just giving this a good look right now prior. Do you see? Do you see that? Mm -hmm. So that is a queen cup that these girls are making. There's no egg in it. Um, I'm not really worried about it. And even if they were deciding that they wanted to supersede and make a new queen again. I'm not worried. We still have drones. There's still an opportunity for that new queen if they do decide that, hey, something might not be right with their queen. I still have some time. Uh, so I'm not too, too worried. And honestly, if they were to decide to go ahead and requeen, I'm not going to be upset or anything. That break in the brood pattern that mm -hmm. that pause. It's actually a mechanical form of of treating for varroa mite because the life cycle of a varroa actually lives on on the pupae that's inside the the brood cells inside the the cells chamber. And so if this colony decided that they wanted to make a new queen, it would allow for an opportunity for no brood because obviously it's going to take a while for that queen to emerge go on her virgin mating flight and come back and start laying. So that's a good mechanical way of helping fight the Varroa population. And plus these bees know way more than, than I do on, on what they need to do for survival. That's a nice little brood to egg pattern. This pollen is gorgeous. Go ahead and slide this one back in. Now I have not seen the queen yet. And that is okay. Again, I don't always look for her. But if we find her, of course we're gonna greet her and say hello and tell her how beautiful she is. Because what queen doesn't like being told that she's beautiful? There she is. Can you see her? She's big and dark. She's tiger striped. If we're lucky, we'll be able to see her drop an egg into the cell.
Yep, she's very beautiful. I'm gonna be gentle. And I have seen enough to feel confident. I had to let my camera cool down. It was starting to get oh, extremely overheated and it kept shutting down. So I had to kind of finish that portion of the hive inspection with my phone camera, just to show you guys that I was closing it up. I didn't add any box to that, mainly because they still had a little bit of work to do. So we are getting really close to going into our, our fall nectar flow. Uh, I am starting to see a lot of the goldenrod already start to grow, which we do have early goldenrod that does start to bloom here end of July, but August and September we have a very nice nectar flow. Uh, and basically I don't harvest again. Once we harvested what we harvested, that's it. We don't pull anymore. I shared we are very conservative when it comes to harvesting honey. I am not a huge fan of harvesting honey, even though I understand how delicious the sweet treat is. Uh, but ultimately, they need it a lot more than we do. And we make sure that these bees have what they need to see them through the winter. Uh, because come next spring, we are back at it again. And um, it's already kind of crazy that we're right around the corner from August. And really August and September, that's when we kind of start getting things ready for, for winter. Which if you haven't learned beekeeping, you kind of always have to be a season ahead. I'm burning up and I'm noticing these clouds are starting to roll in, which means we're probably gonna get hit with another thunderstorm. Um, and if you guys have ever been in the colonies when the clouds start to cover the sky. Uh, the bees are not always the happiest. So I'm pretty much gonna go ahead and just call it and uh, come back and do another hive inspection maybe tomorrow morning early because it's not even 10 o'clock and I'm already drenched in sweat. And I feel like it's 100 degrees. Whew. Thank you guys for watching. And as always, don't be afraid to get your hands dirty and learn something old. Bye, guys.